today we're talking about mashed potatoes. I'll share some tips and tricks on how you can make it perfect every time. And then we'll discuss some ideas on how you can plate it beautifully. Hi, I'm Taryn. Welcome to my kitchen studio. This is where I like to have fun with food and share tips and tricks to make your food not only taste great, but look great too. If this is what you're into, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Today we're going to discuss potatoes. We'll boil some up and turn it into a beautiful fluffy mash. Then we'll discuss different ways you can plate it, thinking about height, colour and layering. So how do you make a nice fluffy mashed potato? Well, you have to start with the right kind of potatoes. Potatoes generally fall into two different categories, floury ones and waxy ones. Floury potatoes have a fluffy light texture and they're perfect for making mash, for baking and for turning into chips. Waxy potatoes on the other hand are a lot firmer in texture and they are great for boiling and using in salads. No matter how good a cook you are, if you use a floury potato, it will not hold together when you boil it. Similarly, if you're trying to mash a waxy potato, it will turn gluey. So for the best results, use the correct potato for the job. I've got some floury agria potatoes here today and we need to peel them. You know how to do it? so I won't bore you with that. These are all peeled and now we're ready to cut them. I will bore you with one little tip and that is to make sure you keep the pieces uniform so that they cook evenly. If you have some big pieces and some smaller pieces, the big ones won't be cooked when the little ones are. And this can result in some lumpy uncooked bits in your finished mash. Now we're ready to bring our potatoes to the boil. I'm going to put some water into my pot until it's just covering the potatoes. Add a little sprinkle of salt and turn on the heat. Now that these are boiling, I'll pop the lid partially on and turn down the heat to a simmer. I'll let them simmer away until the potatoes are tender. I'm sure you know this, but you can check that they're soft and ready with the tip of a knife. Our potatoes are nice and tender, so I'm going to pour off the cooking liquid. I've put my pot just back on the element. There's no heat turned on, but the heat that's still there is going to help dry out the potatoes a little bit. And this helps make the mash nice and fluffy. You know why your mash always tastes so much better at a restaurant? Because you wouldn't be a proper chef if you didn't put cream and butter into it. If you're at home and want to keep it slightly healthier, you can use milk or milk and butter. And if you need to keep it completely dairy free, you can add some of the cooking liquid back in. For my potatoes today, I'm going the whole hog, the cream and the butter. So we're going to bring a little bit of cream to the boil. We don't want to add cold cream to our mash because that's going to cool it down for us. So we're going to add hot cream and it'll keep it nice and warm. I'll pour some cream in here and heat it just before I knead it. To do the actual mashing of our mashed potatoes, you can either use a masher or a mouli. A mouli is going to give you a much finer, smoother mash if you've got the time to sit there mouliing. <laughs> or the masher, you can just get in there and mash it. I'll show you a little bit using the mouli. Doesn't that look cool? I'm sure the kids would love it served up just like that but I don't have all day, so I'm just going to use the handheld masher. Mm. 
Now it's time to heat the cream. We want to bring it to the boil and then turn off the heat. Now we're ready to add the butter and cream. Add a little bit at a time and whip it in with a wooden spoon. Keep adding as much as you need to make it light and fluffy. And don't forget to add some seasoning. Oh, look at that. Doesn't that look amazing? Nice and fluffy. At this point, you can add any flavourings. Cheese, whole grain mustard, sautéed onion and garlic or leeks. You can add herbs. Now's the chance to add anything you like. But for today, I'm just going to keep mine natural, just like this. So our mash is made and ready to plate. A lot of people struggle with how to plate it because really, in itself, it's pretty bland. There's not much to it. So I'm going to show you three different ideas to get your imagination going. So for this first idea, I've got a nice beef casserole, some beans and tomatoes as garnishes, and I'm going to use a black plate so that the white mash will stand out. Just going to grab a nice big blob of mash and plonk it right in the center of the plate. And then hollow it slightly, just make a little bowl shape there in the middle so that our casserole's got somewhere to sit. Then we'll spoon in some of the casserole. And let some of the liquid just drip over the sides in a few places. Put a couple of beans on, maybe a couple on the side. Stand them up a little bit to give them a wee bit of height. I'll cut some cherry tomatoes in half and scatter them around. And lastly, I'll just finish with a little bit of fresh rosemary. So there's dish number one. Doesn't that look appealing and inviting, especially on a cold winter's night? We've thought about the colour, we've got height, and we've layered up the different components of the dish. I think I'd like to dig in, would you? And now on to dish number two. For the second dish, I've got some pork fillet here, beef jus, red capsicum, shredded spinach, and we're going to do it on a square white plate and use a round mould for the mash. I'll put the mould in the centre of the plate. I've lightly oiled it so it will slip off easily. The important thing here is to pack it in nice and tight so that you get a smooth edge when you pull off the ring. Now just cut my pork fillet and I'll place a few pieces here on the top. And then we'll put on some of our meat jus. Just going to sprinkle this on, get it on the plate. And for a bit of colour we'll use our capsicum and spinach. Doesn't that create a wow factor? We've also got our colour and our height creating some interest in the dish and layering it up from the mash to the meat and to the garnish. And now for plate number three. For our third and final dish, we'll use the rest of our pork fillet. We've got a creamy mushroom sauce, diced capsicum, chopped parsley, and this time we're going to pipe our mash onto our rectangle plate. So we'll get this mash into the bag. Wrap the bag over your hand and use your hand to help slide the mash off the spoon. Fold up the edges and hold it in your dominant hand. I'm just going to pipe the mash in little circular motions the length of the plate.
position the meat slightly overlapping to create height. Then we'll spoon over some mushroom sauce. And finish with the diced capsicum and parsley. Doesn't that look like you just want to grab a fork and dig right in? We've talked about the different colours to give the dish a bit of interest. We've got some height and we've layered it up with the potato, the meat, the sauce and the garnishes. So here they all are. Which one's your favourite? Let me know in the comments. I hope you've got some new ideas for how to plate your perfect fluffy mash. Don't forget to think about the colours, the height and layering of your different components. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Happy mashing!